Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to Bigger on the Inside, the new Who, Doctor Who, Watch Along podcast. It's just Tim here, um, just here to introduce you to the interview that I did with the lovely Miranda Raisin. You will know her as Tallulah from Doctor Who, Daleks in Manhattan and Evolution of the Daleks. You will know her from um, Merlin, you will know her from Spooks, you will know her from Vexed, you will also know her as the voice of Millie from Thomas the Tank Engines. You will also know her as Conscious Clark in the Big Finish Doctor Who audio stories. We talk a lot about Big Finish, we talk a lot about Doctor Who, we talk a lot about the experience of working on Doctor Who. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Miranda was really fun to talk to and enjoy. So I asked a lot of our listeners to send in questions and one of the first questions we got was about the accent of Tallulah. People want to know how much preparation you put in for that and is that your voice we hear singing? So it is my voice, <laughs> first question is easier, it is my voice singing in the episode um, uh, on screen and then they did the album and I was like oh wow and they, they, they got somebody else to sing the song on the album oh. so they got a, a, <laughs> a professional singer um, on the album so you know we, we can't be offended in this business you just got to take it on the chin um, but yeah so but it was great it was great fun it was and also she's not meant to be um, she's not meant to be a kind of a lead on Broadway. She's meant to be kind of off, off Broadway. Um, and the accent was sort of based on one of my favorite films um, is uh, called Adam's Rib. And it's a brilliant um, Catherine Hepburn, Spencer Tracy, just a brilliant film. And Judy Holliday actually won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. And her character kind of talks like that. She's like, she's she's sort of everything is drama and everything is like but there's one bit it, on the our first day that we were filming my first day rather um was the empire state building and i remember the director our lovely director um james saying um you know top of the world and doing this like because she says <laughs> i'm on top of the world and and actually that's the one bit that really sticks with me because she wouldn't actually say wild. That's a bit more kind of, um, yeah, you know, sort of gangster movie sort of thing. Uh, but anyway, so that, that anyway, I, I, I probably made other mistakes, but that was the one when I watched it, I was like, ah, wild. <laughs> he looks like a really fun character to play. Does it, does she feel like that when you were playing Tallulah? Oh yeah. Uh, just everything. I mean, you know, I was a bit nervous about, running around in a leotard um for seven weeks because or however long it was um seven or eight weeks because um you know I I was at the time I was playing jokes and just generally you know I've seemed to have made a career of playing police women or you know spies or lawyers who generally have clothes on at least when they're kind of out and about so um you know but the, actually they were so amazing you know that kind of it was one of those roles which I haven't played enough of. I'd love to do more where you, you're totally transformed. You know, you go into, into makeup and wardrobe and, you know, tracksuit. And I had really short peroxide spiky hair at the time. And then you come out a different person. They've just done yeah. all the work for you, basically. <laughs> so, yeah, I um, loved I, it. I rewatched the episodes um, a couple of nights ago, just before this. And I, I forgot how much screen time you share with Freema and at the time a relatively unknown Andrew Garfield, who would later go on to yes. be Spider-Man. So how was Absolutely. it working with those two? Oh, just lovely. And actually, Andrew was in the same hotel. Um, so we kind of, you know, got to know each other a bit, kind of, I don't know if we went to Nando's, but, you know, doing that kind of thing. Um and uh, and with Ryan Carnes as well. Um, the sort of the three of us were all sort of staying together. Freema was obviously there for the long haul, so she had her own place to to live. But they were all um, they were all brilliant. It was the most fun job. Um, and I mean, yeah, and Andrew, I I I was actually mostly cut from it. But I had I played Claire Foy's character's best friend in Breathe um, with uh, Andrew, and we filmed in in sort of Surrey and in South Africa um and that it was really like you know sort of seeing him 10 years on you know suddenly I mean he'd just gone sort of stratospheric and I thought you know 
sort of I, I was a bit fangirl by that point I was like you know he'll never remember me but actually on day one he was like hey babe how's it going I was like oh thank god <laughs> my ego is intact um but no he was lovely and and Freema I've 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 seen a couple of times since you know at sort of events um uh, but I, I should get in touch with her she's she's the she, I've got her number she's a lovely girl but um I don't think she lives in England anymore I don't know where she is oh America. fancy get her <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was only two episodes, but the character seems to have, people seem to really remember it when we announced that you were coming on. I think from when we've announced guests before, we haven't had a response like we've had for Tallulah. People just seem to oh. really love this character. Um, it was only those two episodes, but those two episodes were Dalek episodes. So that must have been yeah. amazingly exciting to only be in those two episodes, but it'd be such a iconic one. So it was absolutely incredible and I didn't realize um so my era was Sylvester McCoy as the doctor and we we watched a little bit I don't think my mother was sort of a massive um you know she just didn't like the idea of us going to bed having bad dreams and so she tried to point us more in the direction of other things we were allowed to watch Street Hawk I remember Street Hawk <laughs> anyway um and you know A Team and those kind of things but but Doctor Who was a little bit like oh you're gonna you know you're hiding behind the sofa with the rest of the country um but I I sort of remembered the Daleks kind of in the back of my mind and then on my first day filming with a Dalek um I we were filming in these kind of underground it was a studio but sort of underground tunnels and you did genuinely have to climb down into the tunnels and with the leotard and the high heels and everything when people went off for five minute breaks sometimes it was just easier to kind of stay for five minutes down in the tunnel um and I stayed one on this first day with the Daleks down in the tunnel on my own. So I thought, and I look, it sounds like total rubbish, but actually I think that the man who was in the Dalek remembers the incident too. I sort of looked at this Dalek and kind of waved at it because there was nobody around and it waved back. Oh, he was in that's there. creepy. <laughs> <laughs> he waved back and, and uh, it was the little plunger thing, you know, and it was just like, it was so exhilarating and so like you know I mean obviously I, I I worked out that maybe there was a there was a another human life down there with me but it was just it was it totally brought back the the feeling and they are the oddest they're just the oddest thing to be frightening you know I think it's because they move so slowly you know when you watch a really good horror and somebody's chasing or even kind of terminated to you know something that there's something about the pursuer being sort of so in control and so going at their own pace, you know, that's much more terrifying than somebody being frantically chased by a baddie. Um, anyway, I, I, they, yeah, they were brilliant. And, and there was definitely kind of a, a buzz around it. I think they even had Daleks in the title, don't they? Daleks in Manhattan is um an evolution of the Daleks that's it yes exactly they've both got Daleks in the title so it's sort of they were definitely tuned into <laughs> so when when was you approached for the role or is there an, an auditioning process for it I had to audition um I think there was sort of a short list um I might be flattering myself with that but I think there there weren't many of us um and it was Andy Pryor casting who's lovely and um and yeah, and I just, I think I felt quite confident. There are some things, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll get them, but there are some things you sort of go for and you just feel like you're looking forward to the audition anyway, because it's just a chance to to play that person, even if you're just playing them for 10 minutes. Um, and that was certainly one of those. I thought, you know, I, I've spent my life doing impressions of people like Judy Holiday, and, you know, sort of, I, that's my era you know if, if I could live in any era and in any sort of from a costume from a fashion point of view from a everything I mean everything I just love it so um so yeah I it was um it was an audition but but I found out the same day which was lovely <laughs> oh that's good because yeah, I know when we've spoken to people in the past they usually say well sometimes I know I'm auditioning for Doctor Who but I don't actually know what the role is and I don't know if the lines I've got are the right lines yes. or if they've just made up lines from another episode or Totally. Well, I think um, I think Russell T. Davis is quite, to my recollection, um, he was quite sort of, you know, just makes decisions quite quickly, knows what he wants. And I think they probably hadn't put the exact 
exact character names. I can't remember what the audition scene was, if it was directly lifted from the episode, but I doubt it was. It probably was a kind of mishmash of things, but they'll have known exactly what to put in order to say, okay, we need to see that she's compassionate or we need to see that she's a panicker or, you know, the, the different aspects I'm sure were all in there. Yeah, because I know a lot of people asked, wanted to say, when we asked for questions, a lot of people just said that they thought she was a great character because she isn't like the standard female protagonist you know she like you said is wearing a leotard and high heels but she's doing everything she's keeping it with david in his yeah. trainers and his suit yeah. <laughs> so yeah. she's sort of breaking all these walls about 10 years before anybody else was oh that's lovely i mean she was i remember somebody giving me um at a stage door of a play actually somebody gave me a top trumps card or whatever the doctor who equivalent of top trumps and there's a Tallulah card and it was quite sweet because it showed sort of um superpowers you know one or you know whatever the lowest score and then it said it said courage nine and I thought that was quite sweet you know it was um I've still got it somewhere um but yeah I mean she she definitely sort of didn't pretend to be something she wasn't you know I don't think there was that kind of I see a lot of in writing now um you know we will make this woman empowered you know, and so it's sort of quite, um, okay, that's what this line is doing. And she's there saying, I'm not going to stand for this. You know, ju you can't talk to me like that just because I'm a woman. But I think Tallulah is, she's of a certain time, obviously. But she's also, even though she's a showgirl, that's a tough world. Even now, you know, it's a tough world. And, and so her kind of scrappiness is completely authentic. Um at the same time, you know, she's trying to prove that she's, you know, mass, you know, she's not trying to prove that she can keep up with the boys. She just sort of has her own motor, you know, is love, you know, in, in, in those episodes, you know, deeply in love with Will Laszlo um, and, and, you know, and just that he's her companion in a, in a lonely world, you know. Uh, definitely, yeah. She was really, I think I kind of forgot since I went back how much of an endearing character she really is. Because like you say, you, you sort of watch the episode as a kid and then the, the only really next thing you see of her is in cards and magazines. Yeah. So it's quite easy to just sort of see her as an image. But when you watch it in the full episode, there is quite a lot more to that character than you kind of realise. Yeah, right. Oh, well, that's that's really nice to hear. I mean, I you know, it was, it was the most fun, most... Um, it was such an opportunity to kind of just go with it and enjoy it and not be, I mean, I'm not particularly in my head anyway as an actor, I don't think. Um, but, you know, when you're around people, and I'm, I won't be the first person to have said this to you, but, you know, the captain really um, dictates the energy. Up and, and David Tennant is the most professional, kindest, most generous playful lovely human being and um and and he just the very nature of who he is and how he was just meant that everybody really if you didn't follow in his footsteps you'd you'd look like an asshole you know <laughs> you you just you could just see the the cast and crew alike you know if he with his punishing schedule and all the lines he had to learn i mean and it's not just you know line learning um it's sort of words made up crazy ass with sentences that go on and not, you know, that, that it's not like you can really draw from experience to help you remember them. It's kind of like learning Russian, you know, some of it. Um, he just did it. He just did it. He was faultless. And um, and I think I think if if he hadn't been, um, you know, the, the person he is, it would have been a very different experience. I think it definitely comes across on screen as well because you. I think you can always sort of tell if people are actually yeah. enjoying the work they do, and you can definitely tell with Dot Two that everybody's just a kid. Everyone seems to have the best time. Yeah, totally. And I think that goes again, cast and crew alike. You know, the props department is so excited to have made the things that they've made and to be showing them, and the the costume department. You know, all those things that you don't see, like you know, running around in the tunnels, for example, and how they keep them wet. You know, you've constantly got, you know, guys with hose pipes and things just to make everything look as dank as possible or somebody will run in and suddenly put another piece of moss, 
you know, somewhere that's just in shot that no one else would. But those little touches are what make the show, you know, almost as much as the performances. Uh, yeah, it, I think it does show because you look at some other shows and you think, why have they, why have they sort of, you can sometimes tell. I always feel like Doctor Who's got this thing where people think it's cheap. and it, I, I don't know the budget for it, but it never, it never looks it. Sometimes you look at an effect and you think, oh, a bit dodgy. But when yeah. you actually see like the actual sets that they've built and you think, well, they've built that for that, that one 15 minute segment and the amount of work that must have gone into that. Totally, totally. And I'm, I mean, that's something that's obviously changed, you know, over the years. I mean, I, I can't remember being aware of the quality when I was watching Sylvester McCoy as the Doctor, the quality of the sets. But almost the sort of the, the fact that it didn't have a Star Wars budget, you know, was sort of made something more eerie. It's like the Wicker Man or you know, you don't have to have the kind of highest budget look. You just have to look like everybody means the story they're telling, you know. And um, which sounds wildly pretentious, but I think I think it's, you know, there's some truth to it that, you know, and similarly, you can watch things with the most incredible high budget and, and, and not be remotely moved by them at all. Exactly. So you went from Doctor Who, which was probably at the peak of its of its fandom, everybody was watching mm. it, it was in all the papers, so then go to another BBC show, Merlin. Yeah. How did the two experiences contrast? So they were similar in that they would like, if you're not going to have fun doing this, you may as well just give up, you know. Um, and they were similar length, I think Merlin was a couple of months as well, you know, another double bill, and it was like the last two episodes of the season, and it was a big, and with Ben Daniels, so I played Isolde and Tristan, um, uh, Ben Daniels played Tristan, who are these kind of, you know, well, uh, they were, they were supposedly a real couple, um, uh, historically, but in, in Merlin, they were, you know, warriors with broadswords and kind of, you know, Robin Hood characters. And um, Ben is the funniest person. Um, he's dry, funny. He had everybody in, in stitches. And I think all, all of those guys that, you know, the, the guys who've been doing Merlin for a few years by that point were so you know happy to have him along um you know just as a kind of he's uh, you should I don't know if he's ever been in Doctor Who but if you have a chance to get him on your show <laughs> for anything he's just he's so dry and funny and um and just you know it, it was it was a pleasure and we filmed in France as well as um as well as in Wales um it is in Wales isn't it god I'm my brain yeah, I think that's also filmed in Wales. I believe it's Wales, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is, yes. Um, <laughs> everything seems to be filmed in Wales. <laughs> everything, exactly, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was just great. And Colin, again, actually, Colin's a very different um, person to, to David Tennant. But I mean, he's, he's similarly just a completely, he's a gentleman. He's professional. He's charming. Um, and he had a very, yeah, just sort of kind energy which sort of um per pervaded pervaded god i can't speak today i don't know what's wrong with me <laughs> anyway yeah it's not until you do podcasts <laughs> that you realize i've never said this word yeah. out loud and everything well, just suddenly like, sounds strange yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. we got some more questions um one of our listeners julian he really wants to know about your experience doing the dragon age video games and how how that <gasps> works out and if there's going to be any oh. more of those yeah hi julian um yeah god they were so I did, I didn't do the first, or did I do the first one? There's a film of it and I didn't do that. And then I didn't do the first game because Cassandra was a very small character in the first game. And um, and so when by the time they did Dragon Age 2, um, I came into it, there was sort of free reign to kind of be a little bit who you wanted. It didn't have to be based too much in the, in the character of Dragon Age 1. And when they first showed me what she looked like because what she looked like was there before the voice i was like oh my god you know she's so she's so hot and she's so kind of you know i thought she's like juliette binoche crossed with um you know a kind of luc besson character um just uh, uh, crossed with um joan of arc you know sort of just this amazingly um strong but also I mean she's she's beyond strong she's just so powerful and so um and she's so tall I think she's like seven foot or something I mean um she's 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 a and she's 
I don't know, she's a, she's a, a hero. And, um, and so, yeah, finding the voice was a kind of, we didn't want anything too precise. So not, uh, but it just had to have, have a sort of slightly European feel to it. So it's kind of almost a mixture of, of French and German, which to me, I had um, Franca Patente and Run Lola Run, um, sort of crossed with Juliette Binoche, I guess, you know. Um, and she's very, I think she sort of got, if I remember correctly, you know, it's very um, uh, haughty as well. You know, she can sound quite sort of snooty. Um, and yeah, and then very happily, they they got me back and they'd really upped um, the, the character for, for the third Dragon Age, um, Dragon Age Inquisition. And, and I was nominated for the Behind the Voice Actor Award, which I didn't even know until they'd had the awards, but oh. apparently that's quite a big thing. It's quite a good, they are sort of the voiceover actor awards. So that was very nice. Didn't win, didn't know who won, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Dragon Age Inquisition won as a, as a, as a cast. For the, yeah. for the ensemble, they they won, yeah. They won. So you could take, <laughs> you put the cherry on the top. Yeah, that yes, was exactly. me. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 that was me. <laughs> so from Dragon Age, whilst we're talking to voiceover, I know a lot of our listeners would be slightly disappointed if we didn't talk about Big Finish um, and your involvement yeah. in that. How That just looks like as much fun as anything, really, just to stand in the booth. being You don't have to get dressed up. You don't have to travel. You can just do it like we are now. So at the risk now of just sounding like a really gushy act who just says, everything's amazing. Um, it is amazing. <laughs> Big Finish, are the, they're the loveliest guys. Um, they have a totally, it's r- so relaxed and informal. You go in, I mean, obviously this is, we are recording at the moment, but it's not the usual. The usual setup is we go to the studio, everybody kind of, sits around chatting and drinking coffee while you know whoever's needed at that time gets kind of called in uh colin has his seat um that he sits in and um and uh colin baker that is and and every we're all kind of like it's a bit like jack and ori you know we're all kind of sitting around the room around colin um uh and then we have this incredible lunch that's cooked by toby who's also the engineer um, who always does the most amazing food and, and I'm, you know, a vegan and there's always somebody who's got like wheat intolerance and there's always some, you know, whatever. He just has this incredible layer of food that we all, you know, guzzle and then you go back and record some more. And and what's unusual is you're all in booths, you know, all recording at the same time. Um, re- you really are together and there is glass separating the booths like a bit like a bit like TARDIS is in a row um and so you can kind of you know you can see and wave at who you're who you're sort of recording with and really get the feel of it and oh it's just it's, the, it's great fun and it's it's still nice to be able to do it on zoom it's very lucky that we're able to do it um you know to to record uh from home but I can't wait to get back to to doing it properly yeah, I know a lot of people were really, they were really, as much as responses we got from Tallulah, for big Finnish fans as well, I think, I think it's sometimes slightly overlooked a little bit when it comes to stuff like talking about Dot 2. So I think a lot of people were really yeah. excited to know that we could, we had the chance to actually talk to someone about big Finnish. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. do you know, and, and I think there's just, there's such brilliantly told stories. There's so much, there's so much effort that goes into it all. You know, they, they, they have real real fans of the show who 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 write it and direct it and you know doctors um uh and I've, I've met a few of the doctors although i i only play colin's assistant um colin baker's assistant and my character um constance clark is a is a wren um who was worked at bletchley park during world war Two and um and they, they're they are all i mean colin knows he's like an encyclopedia of of doctor who and not just the sort of who did what when but his own experiences and you know listening to him talk about conventions and you know all conventions with david prowse and all these extraordinary people and all the kind of the lives these people have had from this show i mean it just it just keeps on giving to anybody who's involved with it you know i came in to play this character in two episodes of doctor who in 2007 and it's 2021 
uh, however we say it, 2021 to some of you. And, um, and, and, you know, I'm still, I'm still in the Doctor Who world and uh, worlds. And I couldn't, you know, I couldn't be more grateful for it. I just, I love it. So just before I let you go, one last question that we ask everybody is if the opportunity came back to return either as Tallulah or as a brand new character, would you be up for that? I almost had to cut you off to say yes. <laughs> um, I, I would uh, without question I'd go back in a heartbeat it's it's um it's just the most yeah pleasurable fun escapist um well thought out it is another dimension it's a world within a world you know my husband said to me yesterday we were walking in the snow uh, with our daughter and we've got really thick snow where we are and he said what do you love most about the snow and I was like do you know it's the transformation it's the transformation it gives everything is a new world and kind of a fresh start and that's how Doctor Who feels to me it's like new worlds you know fresh start every time I record every time I have anything to do with it I kind of come out of it feeling just um you know that, that there's no end to, to the things we can discover. And there you have it. That was my interview with the lovely Miranda Raisin. Thank you so much, Miranda, for lending us your time to talk everything Doctor Who, Merlin and Big Finish. It was super fun, and I know our listeners will have enjoyed it very much as well. If you would like to have more guests on the show, subscribe, leave five-star reviews, tweet at us who you want to be on the show, at Bigger on the Inside Pod. Um, is our Twitter handle, it's also in the description, you might just want to double check that because I might be wrong Um, so thank you very much for listening guys me and Harry and Harrison massively appreciate all the support and once again thank you to Miranda for coming on the podcast amazing chat, cannot thank you enough